Hi everybody, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today is part two in our three-part installment on doing a tune-up on a Porsche 356. So today we're going to do the electrical tune-up and that means we'll be taking a look at the spark plugs, we're going to head and take the distributor out and take a look at the points and when we get done with that we'll go ahead and put everything back together and time the engine. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. tools and supplies we'll need. In the upper right there is the owner's manual and I have it open to the page that talks about how to set the timing and how to change the points out on the car. It's very very useful this manual. It's got tons of information in it. Down below that are our tools. We've got a 13 millimeter wrench that we're going to use to pull the distributor off the car and to the left of that is our 0.016 inch feeler gauge that we'll use to actually set the point gap a little flat stubby screwdriver that's helpful for setting the actual point gap. Then next to that is a little bag of wrenches. There's a couple of little teeny nuts on this distributor and it just it's nice to have the right wrench for that. To the left of that we got a couple of spare parts. The one at the top is the condenser. Now I'm not going to replace the condenser this time around. I usually only replace it if there's actually a problem with it. But I wanted to include it for completeness. Below that are the points. Now these are in two halves so these points are two part points. Some of the other cars I believe have single part points but uh, for our car for a 58 it's two part points. Below that is some special grease by Bosch that we use on the actual distributor cam to lubricate the cam that the points ride on. And it's very sticky but it's a very good grease for that. Next to that we have our spark plug socket. Now that guy has a little universal joint on the end of it. it. Makes it so easy to get the spark plugs out of the car. Next to that of course we have our ratchet and a couple of extensions that we'll use for that. Above that in the middle is the anti-seize that I usually put a teeny bit on the spark plugs when I put them back in. Just to, I just really don't want those things ever getting stuck inside the cylinders. And to the left of that is my dwell tack meter that I'm going to use to go ahead and set the timing. Now you don't have to use this fancy dancy meter. You can use just a continuity tester. Anything like that will work. Something with a light on it that works great. Uh, or a multimeter something like that. We just need to be able to uh, check when the points actually close and that's how we're going to set the timing. I'll run you through the steps for today. So the first thing we're going to do is actually pull the distributor out of the car. It's very easy to get out and it's much easier to work on on the workbench than it is in the car. So we'll pull that out, we'll put it on the workbench, we're going to replace our points. I always do that. We're going to inspect all the other parts in there, the rotor and the, and the uh, distributor cap and all that sort of stuff. Just to make sure everything's okay. We're going to re-grease the cam on our point, for our points. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall the distributor back in the car. After that we'll go ahead and pull the spark plugs. Now I don't really change the spark plugs out very often in this car but I do like to pull them um, from time to time just to take a look at them and make sure that we don't have anything wonky going on in one of the cylinders. They really tell you quite a bit about how the engine's running. So great! So we'll, we'll do that and then I'll also inspect the spark plug wires a bit. When, when, when I've got all the plugs back in I'm going to go ahead and time the engine statically. So this is a, since it's air cooled and the distributor has got a mechanical advancement on it, it's pretty easy to time the engine. You don't even need a timing light. You can do it while it's not running. So we'll go through that whole process and then we'll start the car and just make sure everything's okay from there. So let's get started. We're going to start by popping off our distributor cap cover here, the rotor. All right, now we can pull that out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at it very carefully a little bit later when we look at the spark plugs. But for now, we're just going to move it out of the way. Now, our engine is not set to a uh, top dead cylinder of cylinder number one. It's not super critical, but I like to do that just so that I've got a place when I put the distributor back in, I know that's where it was. So let's go ahead and rotate our engine forward. Now I have to remember we've got the car in neutral and if you've got it in neutral make sure you have the brake on and have the, have the wheels chalked. Okay. 
All right, here we go. Coming up on our mark here. And we can line up on our marks down here as well. Right in the center mark here, up against the mark that's on the generator tower here. Now one of the cool features of this distributor is it's only held on by really one bolt and when you loosen that bolt you're not affecting the timing at all. So you can take the distributor off and put it right back on and you'll know your timing is going to stay exactly where it was. So that little bolt is this guy here. It's a little 13 millimeter. It's actually a nut, sorry. 13 millimeter nut. And on the back of the distributor here, we have a little nut that's holding on the wire that goes up to the coil. It's a seven millimeter on mine. We just need to loosen it and get our wire off. And there's also a little washer on there. So be careful when you take these out that you don't lose your little washers. All right, great. With the wire off the back of the distributor, we can now just pull the distributor straight up, comes right out. There we go. Now that we have our distributor out, we're going to go ahead and, and do the rest of the work on the workbench. With the distributor on the bench, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it very carefully, kind of do an inspection. We're going to pull our rotor cap off here. It just slides right up, set that aside. Now what you're looking for on the rotor cap here is this surface right here and this little bit right up here. You want to make sure they're both clean and we'll go ahead and clean them in a minute but you want to make sure that they're not all uh, eaten up and corroded and all horrible. This one looks fine. This cap is a fairly vintage cap as far as I understand. I think it's quite old. Next we'll go ahead and remove the wire here that's hooked up to the points. Now it's also hooked up to the condenser as well, but we're not going to pull the condenser off. If you are going to swap out your condenser, now's the time you do it. You'd pull these two screws off and this will loosen up this mount and you can slide the condenser out and put your new one in and get it all set and ready to go. So we just loosen this little guy here. This is also a seven millimeter. And you want to keep track of these little parts. They're small and they can really get lost in a hurry. So we pull that guy off there. It really just slides pretty much kind of straight up, I think, if I remember correctly. So one way to do it is to, to grab your fingernail and, and move the points and then use your other finger underneath it to sort of work it up like this off of this pin. There we go. Snap. That's it. You don't need to pull that screw completely out. You can just leave it in like that. We'll going to set our old points aside. So the points have a little slot in them so that they can go down so you don't have to take this screw completely out. In fact, all I really needed to do on it was really just loosen it up a little bit. But you want to take note of this sort of assembly that's in here. We've got the end of the bolt, then we've got another little uh, flat plate here with a hook on the end of it. This part right here is sort of a phenolic pad that's an insulator and this black piece is also an insulator to make sure that the the spring on the points doesn't ever touch contact the body of the distributor itself. Great, so and then on the back side We've got a, a large phenolic washer there as well, which sits inside, a little hard to see, but there's a little groove in here that this phenolic washer is going to sit in to sort of center the whole thing. And then we've got a regular washer, we've got our connection to the, to the coil, or the, we've got our connection to the condenser here, and then we just had a, a little washer and a nut. Next we'll go ahead and remove this part of the points that is actually set in here. This is the uh, adjustment end of the points. You just need a flat stubby screwdriver for this. Anything will work. Now this, these screws here, this one is attaching the points to the, uh, this plate here in the distributor. This one is, is a screw that's sitting on an oblong head actually and it's used to adjust it. So when you screw this thing back and forth, it'll move the points backwards and forwards. 
So we can just loosen this up and take our old points out. There we go. Now we're going to need our screw, of course, screw and washer here. We'll need that. While you've got this uh, apart, it's you can see everything under here. So it's it's great to be able to see the uh, mechanical advancement that's in there as well. So you can put the rotor cap back on and it gives you a little bit of leverage. You should be able to hold the bottom of the distributor here and turn it back and forth and actually see the advance mechanism. And it shouldn't hang up at all. It should be free. It should snap back on its own just like that. You want to make sure that's working properly. If it's not, then you're going to want to need, you're going to have to rebuild the whole thing. And that means pulling this whole plate off and getting into the bottom mechanism on this. There's a little grease on the top of this plate, so we want to clean that off. And now's a good time to clean this cam off as well that the points ride on. You just want to go ahead and clean all that off. There's just going to be some old grease in there. And you want to feel this bearing, this bushing that's in here as well. It should feel very smooth and should turn very easily. And this feels great. Now that we have the old points out, we're just going to go ahead and replace and put our new points back in. We just need to get this guy back on. So it's it's the, the only problem is that it's just sort of under a bit of compression here and so you like this whole assembly to be fairly loose it just makes it easier to get in so another thing I like to do before we actually put the points on is get a little bit of lubrication on this shaft right here because that's the the bearing surface for these points so that's where this fancy dancy grease comes in so this grease is, is it's very stringy and very thick and the idea is that when you get it on the cam here, it's not going to go flying all over the place. So it's a kind of a special formulation they use for this. I also use it just a teeny weeny little bit. You don't need much just to put on this shaft here. Just to lubricate it a little bit to make the points move back and forth a little bit better. We'll go ahead and set our, put our points back in here. Pull that up and push that down. There we go. And then we want to make sure our points are all the way seated down. Okay, so looking at this again, we want to make sure that we've got the end of the bolt, this metal clamp here with the, with the bent ends on it here that are holding the spring from the points. Then, of course, the springs with the points. Then our phenolic piece and our black plastic insulator here to keep the back of the points from ever touching the actual back or the outside of the distributor itself. Okay, great. Well, at this point, we certainly don't want that coming back off again. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put our nut and our washer back on the back of this. We also can't really set the points if this thing's moving around at all. So we want to make sure this is, this is done, finalized. Use our little seven millimeter wrench here and tighten this back up. This does not take a lot of force. You want to be careful and watch this bit in here and make sure that nothing turns or that the this piece, this metal piece, twists and touches this bottom plate. That'll cause the points to short out and then your car won't run. Okay, great. So we just tighten this little guy down. Now we're going to put in the other side, the stator side, it's a little bit easier to deal with. So it just goes down here and we just put our screw back in. We get it started with a little smaller screwdriver. Now we don't want to tighten this down just yet. What we need to do is we need to set our point gap. So really what we have to do is we have to rotate the distributor enough to where it sits right on the top of the cam and gives us the most amount of clearance here on our points. So we're, we're going to not tighten them down, but we're going to cinch it down just a little bit. And then we take our feeler gauge and we check our gap. It should go in fairly easily and if not, just move it back a little bit. That's what this screwdriver in the back, this screw in the back here is for. 
You want to make sure this is loose and not too tight. But you can rotate this screw, and since it's oblong, you can see how it will move the points backwards and forwards to allow you a very fine movement and a fine adjustment. You want to also double check that you're still on your cam. It's a little fiddly, but not too bad. Double check. So basically, go back and forth until you get this gap just so. There we go. That feels great. Right there. Go ahead and set our set screw. Okay, now we're going to double check again. I want to make sure to rotate fully so that we're very much at the top of the cam here. And check with our feeler gauge. And how does that feel? That feels pretty good. Okay, great. Well, that's pretty much it for now. The last thing we want to do, this little felt pad on the top here, we want to pull this out and put some a little bit of dab of oil underneath there. So there should be two of them under here, actually. There's the other one below it. So I like to put a little bit of oil in there and then just sort of sandwich this other one back on top of it. And that's going to help lubricate in the, uh, the actual bearing for the, the bushing for the distributor itself. And all we use is just a little bit of motor oil is really what's supposed to go in there. Well, you just need a teeny bit in there. So I put a little bit in this up here and you just sort of pour a little bit in there just a couple of drops really is all you need all right I'm gonna put our little felt pad back on and you want the felt pad to soak up the oil all right that's perfect and just wipe that off you don't want oil flying around in this, but this should be, this little pad on the top should be saturated with oil. Okay, great. The final thing we need to do is to grease our cam here that the points are going to run on, and that's our special grease again here. It's very stringy. Put a little bit on there, and then rotate it around, and it will sort of lubricate itself a little bit. You can see as it rides around things around a little bit and of course just wipe off any extra bit that you can see that's obviously not really doing anything okay with our points reinstalled and everything all greased and lubricated up we're all set here I do want to take a quick look at the rotor cap so we'll just kind of make sure that it's okay and I'll just clean it a bit with a little bit of uh, contact cleaner all right we just want to clean this contact at the top here and when you get done cleaning it, just take a good look at it and inspect it for any sharp edges here or any tremendous amount of wear or burning here on this, this flat surface here. This one looks great. You also want to check the bell here to make sure it's not cracked anywhere. If there's any little bits of oil on it, we'll just go wipe those off. Okay, well we can go ahead and reinstall our rotor cap now. There's a, there's a slot inside here, all the way down here, and that goes to, that, that lines up with this slot right here. And the slot is also pointing the same direction as the pin on the rotor, so that makes it easy. So you just kind of line those guys up, and it should go down and snap all the way. Okay. With our distributor all done and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and put it back in the car at this point, and we're going to start pulling some spark plugs to go ahead and see how they look. All right, so before we put our distributor back in, we're going to go ahead and hook up our wire on the back here. And it's just a lot easier to do it here than it is to try and do it while it's on. So we've got, got our ring connector, then a washer, then a little lock washer, and our little seven millimeter nut that goes on the top here. You just want to take note of where it'll be when it's in so that you've got clearance and enough room and things. That looks pretty good right there. Use your teeny weeny little wrench. And this only needs to be tight enough to where it doesn't come loose. 
Don't go crazy with it. One last look down here to make sure that our points aren't twisted or that they're going to be shorting out somewhere at this bottom plate or behind or anything. Then all that's left is, since we set the car to top dead center, we go ahead and move our rotor so that it's lined up for top dead center. Top the distributor in the hole, like this. And then all you have to do is just sort of wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Maybe twist the rotor a little bit. There it goes, and it seats right back where it should. Great, we can move this guy back here and out of the way. We put our 13 millimeter nut back on. Okay, great. And just cinch that back down. All right. That feels great. Everything looks good on there. We'll go ahead and pull the spark plugs out. Got the hot set up here with the socket with the universal joint on the end of it. Works really, really well. And inside is, probably can't see, it's a little rubber bushing in there to hold onto the spark plug so that we can get it in and out of the well without it falling. So this, this works great. So our first step is going to be to pull our spark plug wire off. Now, one of the things you want to look at really carefully are these rubber gaskets that are around here. They should be in good order. They shouldn't be all cracked and split. And they should be sealing all the way around. Since this is an air-cooled engine, we have to make sure that we don't have any leaks. So you just wiggle this guy back and forth and kind of pull it out. There we go. You can see how big this hole is. So if there's a leak there, then we lose quite a bit of cooling. So we're going to fit our spark plug wrench in over our spark plug. There we go. I'm going to wiggle it in till it seats. Okay, there we go. It shouldn't be very tight. All right. And there's our spark plug. All right. So there it is. Looks a little bit uh, black, I'd have to say. So it looks like we're running a little rich. Looking at the spark plugs, number one, two, and three look great. They're that nice brown color we'd expect. But number four is kind of black and wet, so it's not oily. It's actually just really rich. So I think there might be an issue with the carburetor tuning. So we'll get to that in the next episode. I've cleaned all of our spark plugs and they're ready to go back in the car. With our spark plugs all cleaned, we've got a teeny bit of Never Seize on the threads, just a little bit. You don't need much, it's just a dab. And we go ahead and put all of our spark plugs back in. Now with our spark plugs all back in, our last step is just to set the timing. Now anytime you change the point gap, you have to adjust your timing because it'll be dependent on when the points close and if you change the gap, they're going to close at a little different time. So this car times at 5 degrees before top dead center. So I'll show you how we do that. This car is timed at 5 degrees before top dead center. So that's going to be this notch right here, the one just in front to, or to the right of the top dead center notch. So we'll go ahead and rotate the engine back just a little bit, just to get us in a place where we can start. I'm going to hook the green wire from our meter to the same side of the coil that's hooked to this distributor. So it's the same line that goes down here to the points. The other one, the, the ground, is hooked to any good ground on the car. I use one of the bolts that the coil is mounted to the shroud. All right, so now that we've got everything all set up, we've got our meter here. Next step is to turn the ignition on in the car. We have to have that on. Okay, with the ignition on the car, what we do is we rotate the engine and we're looking for our meter to, to turn on. There it goes. Click. And then we look down and we see that it's actually just about right. Uh, this leading notch here, this five degree notch, should be lining up with the notch here on the generator pedestal. So we can always back that up a little bit and go forward again just to double check. And there we go. Click. So that's it. So my timing is actually right on. But I'm going to show you how to adjust the timing 
if yours isn't right where it should be. So it's done with this nut here, this little 10 millimeter nut. It's just a clamp nut that clamps the distributor and keeps it from rotating. So you just loosen that up a little bit until the distributor will actually turn. All right, so now that we have it loose, all we have to do is set this right where it should be. So get the notches perfectly lined up, back your distributor up a little bit. All right, so back it up until you see the meter go down or turn your light turns off. And then rotate until you hear the little click. All right, and then do it a couple of times. And then boom, there's our meter going up. So once you've done that, leave that there. Now rotate the engine backwards a little bit. Watch your light go out or your meter go down. And then watch as, as it comes up to the mark. There we go. Perfect, right on. We'll go back again and just double check it. You want to kind of rotate a little bit backwards. Take some of the slack out of the drive, the, uh, all the drivetrain down there. Rotate up, our meter is down, light would be off. Boom, there it goes. You can kind of hear the little, the little, um, little electrical connection. Okay, well that's great. So then once you're happy with that, go ahead and tighten your nut back up. The other side is also 10 millimeters. So just hold it with your other and tighten your nut back up. All right, and then one more time, double check. So rotate back. All right, our light's gone out and our meter's gone down. We rotate. There we go. Timing marks are lined up here with five degrees before top dead center. And that's it. Okay, our timing's great. Our distributor is locked back down again. You can always kind of grab hold of it and try and turn it a little bit. Yep, we got it. We got our nut tight here and our 13 millimeter tight there. We go ahead and turn the ignition off the car and disconnect our meter. Okay, well all that's left is to put our distributor cap back on. We just need to get it up over the rotor, set it down and make sure it's sitting all the way down and on its notch and just put our little clips back on. Okay, that's that. Give it a little tug. Everything feels great. And with the car running nicely, we're all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed part two in our three-part series on doing a tune-up in a Porsche 356. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and just leave them down below. And next up is going to be part three and where we tune the carburetors. So stay tuned for that. So thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, Safe travels. Bye.